let's talk Great about these Thank results you. and let's talk about about the way investors uh, should think about this uh, and the way uh, you think they should be thinking about this. Well, well listen, we're, we're not one to give investment advice one way or the other. We're, we put our heads down and we run the company. But if you look at the results in delivery, the growth continues unabated. We've got gross bookings growth of 128% year on year. Our revenue growth was over 200%. Uh, in a delivery segment, and losses are coming down. We're investing, but actually in 15 countries now, we're profitable, generating $100 million in EBITDA, on $2.5 billion of bookings. So the question is to, like, everyone agrees, delivery can be big, but can it be profitable? The answer there is yes. On the mobility side, as things open up, our business comes back, and mobility, we've proven profitability for some period of time. So we feel very good about these results, and obviously investors can either make a bet on us or not. Um, but if we keep executing and growing the company, I think we'll be more than fine. Speak to, though, the timeline with which you think about the whole business being profitable, the core business, which I, which I know in, in, in many markets is, and then when delivery unto itself becomes profitable. Sure. Uh, we have said that in 2021, we expect the whole business to be profitable. And we expect the delivery business as a whole to be profitable. The timing of that is going to depend on when uh, society opens up again. But what we're seeing over and over again in places like Australia or Brazil or Taiwan is that as these uh, countries are opening up, for example, in January in Brazil and Australia, our volumes in the mobility business were down only about 20 to 30 percent. In a Taiwan, we're actually up now, uh, significantly up 16% in January. So what we know is, as the opening happens, uh, people come to ride Ubers again. Uh, we are seeing a share gain on our platform versus other modes of transportation. We've invested a lot in safety. We've, invest, we've invested a lot in trust that is showing. And then the delivery business is going to continue to boom again. So what we're looking forward to is both of our engines pushing significantly positively, and we think that's going to happen by the end of the year. Maybe this is a, a meta or philosophical question about growth long term in, in the core mobility business, but in a post-pandemic world, do you think that more people are going to be using your service or less? And the reason I ask the question is because there's clearly been more car ownership uh, in many places. And there's the potential that people have left cities and are starting to go into other places and what that actually does to the business. I could see it cut both ways. Yeah, I, I think that that hypothesis is correct. So we look at the evidence. One is we're seeing growth, actually, of Uber in the suburbs as well, uh, which is actually pretty interesting. We have historically been more of, of an urban service with Uber Eats and now with some people living in the cities. They're living in the cities, but they're still using our service, uh, whether it's going to work or whether it's going out on social occasions, et cetera. So I see wherever people live, they're going to use Uber one way or the other. The other factor that we see is Uber is coming back much faster than taxis. It's coming back faster than transit in some cases. And actually what we're doing now is we're investing in technologies with an acquisition of AutoCab uh, or RouteMatch that are going to power taxis and are going to power transit with our technology so that we can bring taxi and transit to the next generation. We think it's a win-win. It's a growth opportunity for us, but it also creates more transportation opportunities for society at large, which we think is a good thing. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.